Welcome back, Shorts. I'm Kalen. With me is my father, Brandon. And today we are going to talk about in the next five minutes the issues we have on the ranch with non game wildlife badgers, gophers, uh, prairie dogs, coyotes, anything like that, and the things and challenges that surround those type of creatures. Well, you got non game wildlife, just like you mentioned, but you know, you've got predators like skunks, coyotes, um, fox is really kind of a non game legal legal descriptions but there's still some of them can be nuisances you got chickens around those fox are pretty sly i mean mm -hmm. uh, you know so uh but prairie dogs are that i i just hate prairie dogs hate them and uh we get plenty of them we got a lot of we got some badgers too they're they're creating a little bit of havoc out in pastures i'm finding big big badger holes and uh that's you know that's no good so they may be, be getting Elmer footed. Uh, if they're not careful, <laughs> they don't watch their step, but, uh, it's, you know, it's tough, especially prairie dogs eating up a big old section of ground, you know, and there's some studies, some of the, some of the tree huggers will say, Oh, but studies have been done. How prairie dogs will actually make the grass better. And if forage is, is finer, I was like, yeah. As it's coming up, but it never comes up hardly at all. Any grass that's just coming up is is very delicate, tender shoots, and it's you know pretty palatable, but it never gets up because that's what they do. They they keep it ate down around there for defensive purposes and for food. And you know, if it wasn't for prairie dogs, we'd be standing ass deep in bad grass, I guess. So uh, these are people they just don't get it. You know? Yeah, that's that's something that Braden as a rangeland management dude like he he said that a lot of times is like there's there's a lot of studies that do promote the mm -hmm. the, the well-being of like a, a prairie dog but he says it's it's kind of it there's there's a fallacy there because it's exactly right. like you said like yeah it does say that but i mean so would any other thing if you had rabbits there or if you had goats Fire. readily available whatever was available to like eat it down but the problem is you know fire they're, they're fire does the it. same thing you want to yeah. see something that'll you know, take the grass out, but when it comes back, it's really nice and lush and green because all the potash it was created. Right. Um, you know, and those new shoots are very palatable. They're very tender, nice, but you know, they do grow up in the grass where a prairie dog just keeps them ate down. So it doesn't do any good. So yeah. it's, you know, that's kind of taking some of the, some of the science behind a study and skewing it or only tell, telling part of the, part of the truth. And then, uh, you know promoting a, an agenda behind it so yeah so, prairie dogs are i hate them if you were to if you were to take eradication out of the picture with two minutes left to go uh what would be a way of getting around or or continuing the ranch and, and making sure that everything is efficient and, and productive as possible while still cohabitating with uh, those types of creatures good question because it's they're they're really tough um you know, that really the only way to fully eradicate them, you can't shoot them. You, I mean, you can get a few, but you're not going to get them all. Yeah. Um, it, poisoning uh, is about as probably effective as you can get. I mean, they tried to, they tried to introduce some black footed ferrets in the uh, CM Russell wildlife refuge a number of years ago, a long time ago. And uh, of course they got plagued. <laughs> so the prairie dogs gave the, gave them, gave the, uh, Black-footed ferrets, which are an endangered species, gave them plague. They died, um, and they were trying to, you know, help them nurse them along a little bit with antibiotics and that sort of stuff into some supplement feed, which was really a brilliant way to do it. But it still didn't do it. And you know, the the, the life cycle of something is such that if you wipe out all the prairie dogs because you've got enough black-footed ferrets, guess what the black-footed ferret's going to do? It's going to croak. They got right. nothing to eat because they've eradicated their own food source. So, you know, there's a there's a whole ecosystem just between the two of them that has to exist for black footed birds to exist. So, other than that, you either live with them, or you 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 really can't do anything else with them. You just have to try to eradicate them or let them let them take the ground over. Simple yeah. as and, that. And the downside with the ground is that's a bunch of acreage that's no longer productive, whether for right. beef or, or crops. So, and, and my biggest hope is that they all catch their own kind of disease and wipe themselves out. Yeah, that's fair. All right. That is non-game wildlife and ranching.